I'll make it really simple and blunt. Are you able to prove something that mums can do this? when I'm asked that. I really just genu like genuinely get excited by the thought and the potential of doing things that maybe people haven't done before. And I love the opportunity of just seeing if I can redefine something. Like, can I, you know, can I have it all, pretty much? You know, can I be an awesome present mum and have my baby with me and teach her things and spend the day with her and do all the monotonous parent things? Can I still be really healthy? Can I still run a business? And can I still be pretty fit and go and compete and juggle that all at once? It's something that's really hard to do and, and often people kind of like, oh no, I don't want to do that or something's got to give. And I just, I really want to see if I can if I can do it all. And, um, and yeah, just like redefine things for like for a fit mother, like people have definitely done it before, don't get me wrong, I'm not the first person. Um, but in what I'm doing, I guess, uh, you know, it's not super common. So I just wanna see if, especially with a little baby um, and a fully dependent baby, you know, she's not two yet or even, you know, she's a baby. Um, so yeah, I just wanna see if I can, yeah, if I can do that, if I can be new mum and wicked athlete and just kind of nail it all. I might fail, I don't know, but I'm excited by trying. You're walking now? So fast. Are you walking? Hey! Now? You're walking. Yeah. Camera. Like... Yeah, you know the camera. They she just does. go from like a little baby to a little person, so it's okay. Yeah. Her like key word right now is more. Oh, yeah. Everything is more, more. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, like berries. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh god. I'll show you downstairs too. The home setup. Yeah, I did. If I do something with a bike erg, I have to like run up and down the stairs only because I'm too lazy to put it. Well, there's not like heaps of space downstairs. Yeah. But I was always using the bike erg upstairs anyway. But yeah, I did like a whole thing. This is my like double under spot and this is our construction zone. <laughs> this, Maddie's been building this for Scotty's oh, birthday. So cool. It's so cool. We got so tan in the first couple of days because it was like super hot trading outside. <laughs> And then we've got her little shade tent that we like carry out, put all her snacks in there so that we can train and she doesn't get sunburnt. It's like a beach tent. And then, yeah, we've just got like stuff everywhere. It was like, this was turning into the recovery center and now it's like turned into the half messy rock climbing wall, gym, bloody everything. Cause we're gonna keep all the ergs and the assault stuff under the uh, of course. Um, undercover. But then, yeah, we just brought home like kind of one of each thing and we just like, rotate the logistics of like everyone trains we have like one box well we've got our barbells and stuff but like yeah we have one set of fives one set of 2.5s just like random stuff grab a couple of dumbbells and then yeah you just have to do some things with a lighter or heavier dumbbell but it's not a not a big deal yeah um i really wish i had bought a set of 25 kilo dumbbells home though because they're really like my key weight for so many things but then the hardest part <laughs> with training at home, I can see one right now. The dog keeps coming like shitting, like she poos <laughs> right near the gym. And so I'm like, <laughs> Maddie went to Bunnings the other day. He's like, oh, is there anything else you need? Like he's gone to get stuff for the rock climbing wall and everything. Like we had to get a floodlight so that, cause I couldn't see the um, assault runner monitor because the lights are behind the sauna. So I was like running in the dark one night, couldn't see the monitor. So like, we need a floodlight so when we're, like at night time we can see if we're training. And then I'm like, I need a really good poo scooper. <laughs> and he comes home with this like, it's, it's the best like poo scooper ever. I'm like, I'm so excited, walk around. <laughs> I was like, he goes, well, I don't know if it's gonna be very good. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the best poo scooper I've ever seen. So pretty much the highlights of my day is like receiving cleaning products in the mail and getting new poo scoopers clean the gym <laughs> I just follow the flies I swear as soon as we come out to train she's like I'm gonna poo now right <laughs> next to the gym and it's like fresh hey yeah, yeah it's yuck is it yuck oh my gosh I had the worst start I um so we obviously had the flag event. I tried to like watch some videos on it. My phone kept freaking out. Anyways, I think what happened is there was a little bit of a rush 
Um, so I didn't watch the video. There was a little bit of a rush um, with the fella that was like instructing things. He said things one way, but I think he got his words twisted. There's a way to do it. And then he's just accidentally said it back to front and I've gone off his word. I'm the only one that went off his word <laughs> about the whole heads up, head down before you go, like the cues to start. And then the whistle goes and everyone's gone. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> I'm not ready. Totally missed the start. Like couldn't, I, yeah. Anyway, I had woken up at like four o'clock that morning, super nervous about like diving on my chest. And I'm like, oh, so anyway, I got cut fully just mad, like just proper angry. I'm like, this is so frustrating. I'm like, I've just started like good start, absolute nightmare. Anyway, so I got super angry, called Maddie. He just finishing night shift and he was driving down the coast, like coming straight down to be here. And I've called him and I'm like, I just need to talk to you. Like I feel feral, like I'm just angry and I just need to like get it out. And like, you know, you're my sounding board. I just need to like get it out of my body. I'm just angry. So I'm blah, blah, blah to him. And then he's trying to hook his phone up in his car on the way here gets pulled over, gets a thousand dollar fine for being on his phone on the way. And the guy's like, you know, what are you doing? He's like, I'm on the phone to my wife. And he's like, is there a reason? Like whatever. And he's like, no nah, man, I did the wrong thing. Like his phone wasn't working. Like, yeah, he goes, I gotta go. And then he's like, yep, got a thousand dollar fine. I'm like, all right, good start to day one. We got a thousand dollar fine. I've been cut in the first one, come dead last. And I'm like, there's there's two ways to go. Like I said, you can. I, I felt like really defiant. Like I was just mad because it was like a silly, like a silly mistake. Um, but anyway, I sorted myself out. Went hard on the next event, um, which was the run, swim, run. I've classically been pretty good in the water, um, and I trialed a couple of different things that worked out and went a little harder than I wanted to, had a sprint finish, haven't done any sprinting since I had a child. I'm like, that hurt me a little bit later. Um, but I was super stoked that I turned it around and that got me kind of back on track, got my head back in the game. It's, it's really still, like, it's all her, you know what I mean? Like, I can make sure she doesn't go near mum when mum's training and things like that, but she's with us pretty much 24-7 every single day at the gym, hanging out getting played with, like getting into mischief, um, getting watched by mum when I'm not there and yeah it's just, a, it's just a constant juggle so for her to be able to do what she does at the level that she does it's, I honestly think it's one of the greatest sporting achievements I've ever seen of anyone anywhere because it's very very difficult so yeah. The only thing we've had to take off site I think is um, the sled really hey. I would take. I had like a heap of sled drags to do, like twelve sets of seventy-five meter sled drags, and my coach is like, "Oh, can you do like smaller laps in you know at home in your yard?" And I'm like, "I've probably got ten meters." I'm like, "I'm not gonna do seven and a half. Like turn around, no. turn around, turn around, turn around." I already have to do with my farmer's carries for like two or like a couple of laps. It does your head in? Like talk about mental training, having to turn around that many times. Yeah. So I'm like, no, we can take this out to the field, the footy field, just like down the road. Yeah. And then just did the sled drags there. Are you going to get more blueberries? Yep. So has your training been much different to what it normally would be if you had the gym available? Or is it no, look, it's, it's pretty on point, I think. Um, like Nick just pretty much programs for me as he would. And then um, I just, if I need to change something, I change something. It's been very, very rare. Um, it's like just some certain things, like I said, with weights. Um, or whatever like that um but it's been pretty much spot on for what looks like it's coming up now anyway like having rogue the like rogue invitational go online means that um you know we're not going to be doing any like crazy outside stuff or all those kind of things so i don't really need to be training that right now but i mean i'm training all the stuff i think that i would normally do anyway i've i mean i'm lucky enough to have the rig um yeah, I'm lucky enough to have the rig that a lot of people don't have in their backyard. So, you know, I still have a wobble target, low rings, high rings, rope, like the fact that, because we had just changed over our rig at the gym to have the bigger outrigger things. So I could actually put a rope on it. Otherwise I wouldn't have a rope at home. So I pinched one of those off the upcoming rig. Um, and I, so yeah, I've been pretty much, I've pretty much been able to do most things. But yeah, I have to do like lots of laps of farmer's carry and sometimes I have to run up the stairs in the middle of a workout to do bike erg or like just random things like that. But I figure that's not really hindering training at all anyway. Like if I'm in a workout and I have to do like a stair run, it's like a second, you know, it's like 10 seconds to get up there and it's 
kind of good practice for uncomfortable fast transitions anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been able to do pretty much pretty much everything, I think, which is good. As much as I can train on time. And it's like I was like, yeah, it's going to be, like, super easy training at home because, um, you know, like, it's obviously in the backyard and there's definitely perks to it. Like, I can put my washing on and my rest breaks, which means that I'm, like, a little bit more efficient on that time which i need but there's like a thousand more hazards here for a child there's like compared to like in the confined space of like the gym that i can sort of block her off and all that kind of stuff like we're in the backyard she climbs the stairs she climbs those stairs we've had to put baby gates everywhere she finds rocks and random things to put in her mouth and so it's like constant like when maddie's at work it's really hard <laughs> if i have to do like a two-hour training session or whatever but um and then I have to train in her sleep so getting anything else done in those days is not so easy but um, <laughs> she's like what I'm fine <laughs> she's like expressive eyebrows man yeah. <laughs> she's living her best life eating those blueberries that's why <laughs> hey you got an ice bath in the corner there as well is that a homemade one yeah it's a homemade ice bath we did like a vlog on it and everything like we made it maddie was like on the hunt for ages and then finally found a place that closed down and sold they were selling that cheap it's like 700 liters hey yeah it's huge and then did a bit of research bought the probe for like less than 250 dollars or whatever it was set up ready to go and it's always plugged in we literally just had the electrician come and put an extra power point like outside for it like a special one because everything I had the sauna and my washing machine and the dryer and everything all hooked up on the same thing. I'd try and multitask and kept like shorting out the house so just everything would go off. <laughs> so we had to get like extra power points on a separate thing put in. And then, um, yeah, I haven't been getting in that because I'm a chicken and I tested it because I'm like still breastfeeding Scotty. The cold was like shutting off like blood flow and stuff. And so I'm like, I can't really do it in the day so the only time I could do it is like when I put her to bed. So then, you know, I don't need to be sort of like flowing milk as frequently. But I don't want to do it before bed because it's really cold. <laughs> and the weather's getting cold, so I just have a sauna instead. <laughs>pretty incredible watching her do this like I was there when she was pregnant <laughs> not that no, I'm their adopted son I think we, that's what we call it I'm, I'm the older adopted son older than both of them but yeah uh, sitting with them like hanging out with them last year when she was pregnant I remember she was on a bouncy ball trying to get that baby out we were eating spicy pizza she's like I can't wait to get this baby out and she like but even that before that she was in Bali with us snatching 90 kilos with his big belly and it's just incredible the how passionate is and then also like how fine-tuned she was with everything she actually looked at like she did everything just I don't know right it looked good and she was still didn't neglect things she did neglected the things that she knew like might not like could be dangerous and, and it was really smart about it and she like obviously captured that on her vlogs and stuff which was really cool and then seeing her a few months later after she had the baby and then just seeing her like smashing it you know and then training with her a bit before Torian and her just crushing it through the open. I was just like, I got to judge her on a few things. It was the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done. Making sure like the film wasn't getting fall, fell over. And yeah, it was just awesome, man. And it's really, really inspiring to see like someone train like that. Cause it's, she just, you, you, she's so passionate, but then she's like, you turn around and she's like back to the mom thing. And she's just like the best mom ever. And she's like, now I'm at the, now I'm mom. And it's just like, I was like, man, I could barely tie my shoelaces and run a business. So it's really incredible. I'm, I'm proud of her and it's cool to be friends with them. And, I stay in their little apartment every time I'm in town, so it's pretty cool. They've adopted me officially. Well, I've got nappies being delivered today, so... Oh, hopefully the bulletproof gets delivered. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then I still want to get one of those power twisters. I just oh, can't figure out what you really want one, don't you? Yeah. What? Do they... A power twister. <laughs> hey, you remember those? They're like a big spring, and you hold it. And you oh, just, yeah. It's just like that. What was so bad? <laughs> <laughs> he got it in his mind like a week ago. He's like, yeah, I need it. Like,
You need to buy 60 for the put it for on, Wanderlust. I'll, yeah. I'll put it on my Instagram. And be Send like, hey, else. my oldest son. Yeah, do it. <laughs> he really, really wants one of these. Surely there's a company that'll send it out. Yeah. But if you, I mean, you know anyone that can get one All this functional stuff's pretty good, but I need a spring. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get some more. <gasps> He's coming. Oh. Don't walk off the edge. Just stay there. <laughs> more. Dad's gone to get more. How did you pull up after the ACC? How did you feel about your performance the ACC? Oh, I was so sore and so tired. I was like the last day, I think, because it just had like maxed out, you know, what I had done. I just kind of maxed myself out more um, in regard to the, like the duration of working out, not necessarily like the intensity of the workouts or the volume, although we did do, okay. Yeah, we did do a lot of um, workouts. 13. <laughs> yeah, like 14, 14 or something in four days. It was like intense. But it was more just like I hadn't worked out for that many days repetitively. So on the Sunday, I started to get like a scratchy throat, like just start to feel like I'm run down, which is pretty common in competition anyway. And then, um, yeah, I think... I think I, for about a week or two, I had like just sinus, you know, like just like run down sinusy kind of thing. So I was like, I just was slow afterwards. I think I had a week off or just, you know, just chilling anyway. Yeah, I, I kind of came good. I was just like, a bit, I was a bit just, yeah, run down from just kind of doing something I hadn't done in a really long time, which is why I needed to do the competition. Yeah. But um, yeah, performance wise and stuff, it was, it was all pretty good. I think um, without, yeah, there were, there were definitely opportunities, like there were highs and lows, there were opportunities in there where I needed to push, steady, push and be uncomfortable, like say something like that double under workout, it was like super intense. And then there were times where um, I could cruise a little bit and um, that was nice. But um, I think it was good for a start, but then going into like, you know, the next stage, what I would need to practice is being uncomfortable more um, and not really having the opportunity to chill out. Like I need to, you know, when I'm, I don't know how to say it in a nice way, but you know, as you kind of work up in sort of other competitions where all of the, the top girls are all in the same place at the same time or whatever, it becomes much more uncomfortable. Everything's a fight. That's now the next challenge where, um, you know, I won't get to have moments where I'm like, oh sweet, I'll just pull back a little bit now because I'm ahead and it's sweet and chill. Um, but yeah, obviously it was good that I could do that for the first time because otherwise I would have been even more cooked um, if I had to go out of my skin for every single workout, especially with that volume of workouts and over four days. Even though training's not everything, you do still have a reason now that you ne never used to have. Like, you know, she places well at a competition. That money gets to be able to go to Scotty. Or, you know, she gets to set a good example for Scotty to show that, you know, what people tell you is not necessarily able to be done can be done. And um, she gets to show that to her and be Scotty's role model as opposed to being able to go into someone, oh, like, look what this person can do and that person can do. She can go, I've done this, like you can do it too. So I think there's a massive driving force is just to, to show on her that whatever she wants to do, she can do. What is it now, April? I'm meant to be doing the next comp next month. Yeah, in a couple of weeks time, I probably would have been in the US by now. Um, or yeah, soon, probably like within a week. But it's kind of nice getting to stay home and do that competition from home and have one less travel overseas because I don't love it like I love competing and I love getting over there but obviously the travel is gnarly on your body and just in general and you know doing it with a child gosh on land with an 11 month old is hard <laughs> let alone traveling and jet lag and being on a plane and more how 
How? They didn't like me. This kid can eat. She is like. Nah. <laughs> she doesn't stop all day long. Literally all day long. She just eats and eats and eats. They like. So she goes to daycare one day a week and um, just to like give us one day and then she has one day just to like go and learn new stuff or whatever. And the lady there's like, we have to order double the food for Scotty. So she has two morning teas, two lunches, two afternoon teas. Otherwise she yells at them. That's what I said. She yells at that. I think one of the hardest things is like, I did this like, had Scotty worked my butt off qualified you know like went so hard and I'm in I'm in the season let's go and then there's like this anti-climax of that's that that's gone now like I don't know if there's a games even if there is a games it feels different and kind of feels a little bit like forced and rushed at the moment you know like it doesn't feel because it's gonna have to be different um and yeah we're just so we're, it's just like uncertain um so I I've definitely had moments where I want to keep training and I can keep training well, but I'm like, what, you know, is the season gone? You know? Yeah. I'm like, it sort of feels like at times you're like, man, do I just like step back now? Like step back, stop fighting for the games or something that's not going to be there, train and enjoy it and do the other stuff that I need to do. Like work on my company that's launching and you know my studies and her and all of that kind of stuff like i definitely have these moments she's eating You're leaves studying as well yeah just a little bit but it's, yeah um but that's maddie told me not to so i'm not allowed to complain that i'm stressed but um the yeah it's that creeps into my head a lot when i get overwhelmed with being like really busy i just go like wow well, you know why am i putting so much like physical and mental energy into that for potentially nothing when if it's not going to go ahead i could spend these months on the other stuff and then still have plenty of time to pick up where i left off still train hard and all that kind of stuff but not to the same extent and focus on the next one and go like okay sweet just let that be what it is i qualified i did really well i went a, won a sanctioned event you know i proved to myself that i can do it um and then just like take the pressure off myself a little bit and come back in for the next round mm. that definitely pops into my head yeah pretty much every time i get like overwhelmed and stressed which is like every second day um and then, and then um yeah that that i would say that's probably where i'm at at the moment you know it's like it's so close to the games but still kind of so far and we still don't even know what we're doing you know still don't even know if it's like worth it and um but obviously it's my job yeah so that's that's what I'm a bit like lully there at the moment I'm still just like showing up still just like getting the training done and doing well uh but it's it's kind of hard to stay focused on that prize not even knowing if it's there I, I just would like to know whether to like let go or charge on you know and it's always I'm like what do I do because I, I just need to be efficient with my time at the moment yeah. that's probably the that's probably like the stuck place but everyone's in that position right now too you yeah. know people own gyms like are we gonna open don't know is it gonna be next week is it gonna be in a month is it gonna be next year you know or businesses are all doing the exact same thing so we're all in that limbo land so when you say let go or charge on you mean just let go of this season or let go altogether of like nah just let go of this season you know like just because there is still it, it just means that I could in a critical time because this is a critical time for me and my business and everything and I'm on the hustle like I'm maxed out like every minute every cell of my body is like maxed out on what I've committed to and um Maddie said to me last week, I think it was, he's like, you've bitten off more than you can chew, but you've already swallowed half. So I'm like, okay. Oh, I can tell, can you tell myself that. Um, and that's 100%. I've 100% bitten off more than I can chew, but I've swallowed half. Um, so I'm like in it now. But yeah, I'm like, oh man, I could really like, I could like cut myself a break in this opportunity if the games didn't go ahead. 
if we just knew. But then at the same time, I've already come this far that I'm like, well, I'll kick on if we're going to kick on. I'm not going to be the one that doesn't. And then everyone else goes ahead. Like, I'm not going to quit if it's going, you know. But it would almost be a slight blessing for me, if I'm being totally honest, if they were like, hey, we're just going to push it back a couple of months or, um, you know, whatever. I don't know, do it online or something. If, if we just knew, then it would potentially just open up a little bit more space, time, energy, all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't such a grind. More chill with me. Oh, how the legs on that one? Yeah, pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like my quads are a little bit heavy. That was the only thing today. I was like, when you do well in other events, you work more than other people, so you come in more cooked too. I'm like I do more reps. But uh, anyway, I was like, look, I can, I can work through sore. It's like tired and under recovered. You know, if you don't eat right, supplement right, don't do all the recovery protocols, and you end up niggly or crashing. That's really hard to work with. So for me, I was like, oh, sore is sore. It's just discomfort, but it doesn't do anything else. So I just learned to be uncomfortable. Maybe in my gym, I'd be like, oh, was that Scotty? I'll go, stop. Can't do that here. Yeah. So this is the first time that I've really had to show up multiple days in a row, multiple events in a row, and also on someone else's watch. So that's probably the hardest thing, to be honest, is you know, I can not know the workouts and I can keep trying to show up and do the workouts, but somewhere in there I have to still be mum, still feed my child, figure out putting her to bed and, you know, like packing her lunch. And, you know, even today I'm doing my best to eat enough food and do all that kind of stuff. But my priori priority is making sure that she has food. Uh, so I just kind of take, you know, second priority and then you know, sometimes you get to warm up and sometimes you don't. So that just always has to come first. And I just can't be as precious about my process like I normally would do. Uh, so sometimes certain events, you know, they might just be a little different or a little bit harder than they normally would be. But I, I definitely think the hardest part is just the logistics of the timing of it all. Obviously, um, I'm learning for the first time what the demands are like on my body. So having to like produce milk, work out hard, still like have my muscles recover and do all that kind of stuff like that's always been a big task as it is so far it kind of feels a little bit like um when I very first started competing and I remember like a couple of days in I was like I am flawed like how do I keep showing up and then I got so conditioned that I could see out of games and be like I could go another day if I had to like I'm, I'm okay but I'm back to that kind of like rookie phase where I really just have to like show up here because that that will show up a little bit better than my body will I think at the moment yeah. Yeah, she's done really well. She's been crushing it. So uh, it was a good little comp to kind of get herself back in before, you know, really going in against the big girls and um, throwing down with them. She's just, just doing her thing. Like, obviously, she's coming back from not competing for two years pretty much. So that's a long time. And then, you know, from having zero training, that is what an athlete would be doing for that first nine months. And then a build up. And then, you know, realistically it's probably only about four or five months that she's actually been able to dedicate to the training that she was doing so um, having that and doing all that in such a short time like it's been really good to go to a competition like this and see where she's at where what she wants to work on and things like that and obviously the biggest thing as well for something like this is learning how to juggle having a baby and breastfeeding in between events and then finding where to put Scotty to sleep as opposed to you know resting and recovering and things like that so um, it's definitely a good one to start back on, yeah, for sure. He, the way that he, the job that he works and what he does and how he is allows us to co-parent like just the dream team, you know, where 
exactly 50-50. There's roles that I need to play as mum and then there's for everything else like there's Maddie you know he's there holding her feeding her doing whatever he needs to do um, aside from obviously the milk that's me and certain things like with going to bed or whatever um, but other than that like I couldn't I I couldn't I just don't think I could want to like I couldn't get that last little bit to be able to do this kind of thing without having him there it's just you need a support network and yeah luckily we can just tag team and support each other through the whole thing which is amazing for Scotty as well because you know to have both parents and we offer really different things so it's really good for her. Yeah, I had like a oh man, and it changes so much too. Hey, um, because obviously like parenting changes like, for the first time. You know, like you don't know what each age brings, what that commitment is, all that kind of stuff. And even the same with business. Um, I've always said I'm kind of like on the I'm on a transition phase, but I'm still in it. I sort of roughly roughly had in my mind, you know, like maybe three or so years of competing like the seasons up competing after her um and sort of like but reassess everyone obviously along the way as to what capacity that is because obviously like I still like what I'm doing it just comes down to like the commitment and time and I'm at that age where I, I do need to consider my future as well and where I'm putting my energy in that and as amazing as it is I've lived the better part of a decade being an athlete and you know getting paid like my job is to work out and go to these cool competitions and do all that stuff which is awesome but it has a timeline your body has a timeline you know all of those kind of things and if you know I think a lot of people make the mistake in not looking forward and I don't ever want to not be prepared for that next stage have it come and then like struggle have this like big crash which just athletes in general do but you know the CrossFit games is just not everything and like it's not realistic to put all of your eggs in that basket and think it's going to carry you through until you're 80 because that is just not realistic even the winners right now like people doing whatever and making you know the big bucks there right now like that it's still going to end like you if you haven't planned for something or haven't set yourself up in another way which is part of the reason why I study too and why I have companies and things like that is because I'm diversifying so that I have the opportunity to provide can to equally provide obviously with Maddie um like for our family for long term um and to also have something that is mine and to do other than competing working out when I can't do that all the time but um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about that a lot more, which is why it's really important to be efficient with my time right now in my business, because I don't want to miss that opportunity and then have like, who knows what will happen with the CrossFit Games. Like so much has changed already. Then like the world gets hit with a pandemic. Like you don't know what's coming. Um, and you know, I think I have, a, um, I have a little bit more control over other aspects, if that makes sense. Um, to be successful, to be, um, I guess, comfortable uh, in life and just be able to do that. So I, I think I could still keep working out for quite a while, as in still competing, but I've always been like 100% committed to the top level, so committed to the, the, like the winner potential. I don't know if that would exceed three years, you know what I mean? Like, um, I, I don't think, I can't see myself being like, Briggsy. <laughs> I'm not as good as Briggsy. <laughs> she's just I held on, held on for like ever. Like I said, she'll be there when she's 80, like beating 20 year olds. Like I'm still good. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not Briggsy. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be a little bit more tired before then. And then maybe like, I don't know if the games are still a thing, it would be like, a, oh, I'm just still really good and I still train really hard and I go and do that and still be a part of it. Cause obviously it's cool, but not as my primary. Yeah. 
things just shifting from primary. I don't think she has a goal, honestly. Like, as weird as that is to say, like, her goal is just to show up and, and do her, you know what I mean? Like, as opposed to going, I want to be in a top three or top ten or putting a number or anything like that on it. I think at the moment she just wants to, to like, be happy, do, do her, have a good time and, um, you know, obviously love on Scotty while she's around and only young for a little bit. So, yeah, I don't necessarily think she's putting anything on it, but in the same token, she's a competitor and she's a fierce one, so she'll, she'll just keep doing what she's doing and whatever she wants to do, I'll always be there for her, so. We don't know what's to come, but we know the potential outcome. We know that there could be a CrossFit Games and there could be events very soon. So I will just keep charging on, doing what I'm doing, prepare, be as prepared as possible for the possibility. And if it doesn't come, then I gain some strength and some fitness in the meantime. And essentially, I, I don't really have anything to lose. So I'll just keep charging on until someone tells us what's going on and then if we get to show up which hopefully we do I'll be there with bells on ready to ready to go hard